Oh uh, yeah. So how many times have you felt frustrated because you could understand English, but then you felt like when it came time to speak it, you didn't feel natural or confident? On today's lesson, you will develop the confidence that you need to feel natural when you speak English with the incredibly talented Taylor Swift. We'll be learning along with the commencement speech that she gave in 2022 at New York University. So if you're ready, let's get started. All right, so we're going to practice with an exercise called imitation. Now the idea of imitation is to try to improve the different details of your speaking by mimicking exactly how someone else, usually a native speaker, speaks the language. You really want to pay attention to things like intonation, the melody, pronunciation of individual words, and so on. Let me demonstrate how we'll be imitating Taylor in this lesson with an exercise that's kind of like karaoke. My experience has been that my mistakes led to the best things in my life. My experience has been that my mistakes led to the best things in my life. So here's how this lesson is going to go. First, we'll watch the entire clip with subtitles. Then, we'll learn how to pronounce the most difficult sounds in her speech. And finally, at the end, we'll practice karaoke along with her. It was all centered around the idea that mistakes equal failure, and ultimately, the loss of any chance at a happy or rewarding life. This has not been my experience. My experience has been that my mistakes led to the best things in my life. And being embarrassed when you mess up, it's part of the human experience. Getting back up, dusting yourself off, and seeing who still wants to hang out with you afterward and laugh about it, that's a gift. The times I was told no, or wasn't included, wasn't chosen, didn't win, didn't make the cut. Looking back, it really feels like those moments were as important, if not more crucial, than the moments I was told yes. Not being invited to the parties and sleepovers in my hometown made me feel hopelessly lonely. But because I felt alone, I would sit in my room and write the songs that would get me a ticket somewhere else. Let's start with the word the. It was all centered around the idea that mistakes equal failure. So the word the can be pronounced in two different ways, the or the. So how do we know which one to use and when? Well, in American English, it's usually pronounced as the because articles like the, a, an are function words. This means that we reduce them in natural speech. The exception to this is when we want to add emphasis. So then we will fully pronounce words that we would normally reduce in our natural speech. So for example, if I ask you to hand me a pencil, I would say, could you hand me the pencil? But imagine you hand me a pen instead. Then I might emphasize to help you understand my need better. No, not the pen, the pencil. Now let's practice saying the word failure. It was all centered around the idea that mistakes equal failure. So the first sound is fa, similar to the word fa. The sound is created by combining the letter F with a long A sound, as in eight or fe. The first part is l, which is the L sound, as in love or light. The second part is y, which is a combination of two sounds. The y sound is similar to the Y sound in yes or yellow. The er sound is the schwa sound which is a neutral vowel sound similar to the er sound in butter or teacher. Remember in American English, the R is rhotic, which means we pronounce it fully, er, er. The stress or emphasis is on the first syllable, fail. Now let's say it together. Failure, failure. And ultimately, the loss of any chance at a happy or rewarding life. A state of switch is from the US, she obviously uses the North American pronunciation. One common feature of this is the pronunciation of the A sound, which we'll hear when Taylor pronounces words such as chance, afterward, and laugh. 
In American English, the A in chance, afterward, and last is pronounced as a short A sound, similar to the A sound in cat or ham. This could be compared to British English, where these words are pronounced as a long A sound, similar to the A sound in father or car. As you can see, pronunciation is an essential part of becoming a fluent speaker. Fluent speakers are easily understood by others because they have really worked at and mastered the rhythm, intonation, stress, linking, and other details of the language that help them to sound natural when they speak. So remember, the more that you practice with exercises like we're doing today, the better that you'll become at it. By the way, so many of you have told me that you really want to start practicing speaking English every day, but you simply don't have anyone in your life that you can practice speaking with on a regular basis. So we decided to go ahead and solve this problem for you by creating the Real Life app. Now, the Real Life app is fantastic because it's the only place where anytime, anywhere, you can simply press a button and will instantly connect you to another English speaker in another part of the world. So not only can you practice your speaking anytime, anywhere, even just during your coffee break, but you can also discover other cultures. It's really like you were virtually traveling around the world, but without leaving the comfort of your home. What's more, you can also advance your English listening with our weekly podcast lessons and learn new vocabulary and never forget it with exclusive flashcards. So what are you waiting for? It's absolutely free to start you can look up Real Life English in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store, or simply click up here or down in the description below to learn more. Now let's pay attention to how Taylor pronounces the T in part of, getting, about it, invited, parties, and sit in. And being embarrassed when you mess up, it's part of the human experience. Getting back up, dusting yourself off, and seeing who still wants to hang out with you afterward and laugh about it, that's a gift. Not being invited to the parties and sleepovers in my hometown made me feel hopelessly lonely. But because I felt alone, I would sit in my room and write the songs that would get me a ticket somewhere else. So Taylor pronounces this with an American T sound. So it sounds like a duh. To make this sound, the tip of your tongue touches behind your teeth and it's a really quick movement, da. Da, da. It's actually the same sound that we have with the R in Spanish or some other Latin languages. The American T is voiced, meaning that if you touch your throat, you would actually feel it vibrating as you're making the sound. Da, 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 da. This is a very common feature of American pronunciation. Now you might be asking yourself, how will I know when I need to use the American T? Now, the rule of the American T is that they occur between vowels, and the second vowel is in an unstressed syllable. Part of getting, about it, invited, parties, sit in. Now let's pay attention to how Taylor pronounces the T in wasn't included, didn't make the cut, and important. The times I was told no, or wasn't included, wasn't chosen, didn't win, didn't make the cut. Looking back, it really feels like those moments were as important, if not more crucial. Taylor pronounces these words with a glottal T sound. So to make the glottal T sound, start by positioning your mouth and tongue as you would when pronouncing the regular T sound. Instead of releasing the air by pushing your tongue up against the alveolar ridge, create a small burst of air by closing your vocal cords and then quickly releasing them again. This creates a distinct pop sound, like a small cough, or the sound that we hear between the syllables when we say, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. This is a really challenging sound. Let's practice together. Wasn't included. Wasn't included. Didn't make the cut. Didn't make the cut. Important. Important. All right, next let's practice saying the word crucial. Looking back, it really feels like those moments were as important, if not more crucial, than the moments I was told yes. The first sound is cru, similar to cruel. The u sound is created by combining the cr sound with the long u sound, as in moon or group. The second sound is shul. It consists of two parts. The first part is sh, 
which is the sh sound as in shu or shi. The second part is all, which is the uh sound, that schwa sound we saw earlier, combined with a dark L, which is like we hear in the words world or cool. Well, light L sound, like we saw in failure, is produced at the front of the mouth, la 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 la. A dark L sound is produced at the back of the throat, oh, 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 oh. So when you put it all together, crucial is pronounced as crucial with the emphasis on the first syllable. Finally, let's look at the stress and intonation in two words, sleepover and hometown. Not being invited to the parties and sleepovers in my hometown made me feel hopelessly lonely. In the word sleepover, the primary stress falls on the first syllable, sleep. So the word is pronounced as sleepover, sleepover. The other syllables, o and ver, are pronounced with less stress, sleepover. When saying sleepover, the pitch typically rises slightly on the stressed syllable sleep, and then falls gradually on the falling syllables o and ver. Sleepover, sleepover. In the words hometown, the primary stress falls on the first syllable, home. So the word is pronounced as hometown, hometown. The second syllable town is pronounced with less stress, hometown, hometown. So how are you doing so far with today's speaking lessons? Let us know which series, movie, or famous celebrity like Taylor Swift you would like to practice your speaking with next. So this time, we won't do the imitation together, but I would like you to actually practice everything that you've learned today. As a bonus tip, I highly recommend that you record yourself on your phone, and that way you can listen back and compare it to the original, so you can really evaluate how you're doing here. If you want, you can go back now and listen to the whole speech again by using the chapters in this video. Are you ready? Let's go. It is all centered around the idea that you face equal failure and ultimately the loss of any chance at a happy or rewarding life. This has not been my experience. My experience has been that my mistakes led to the best things in my life. And being embarrassed when you mess up is part of the human experience. Getting back up, dusting yourself off, and seeing who still wants to hang out with you afterward and laugh about it, that's a gift. The times I was told no, or wasn't included, wasn't chosen, didn't win, didn't make the cut. Looking back, it really feels like those moments were as important, if not more crucial, than the moments I was told yes. Not being invited to the parties and sleepovers in my hometown made me feel hopelessly lonely. But because I felt alone, I would sit in my room and write the songs that would get me a ticket somewhere else. I really hope that you enjoyed today's lesson, you got a lot out of it, and that your speaking got a little bit better than before you watched the lesson. So if you want to keep improving your speaking, I recommend you check out this lesson next. Let's watch a clip. You sure pulled that off. We did. <sighs> what in the world did you say to our class to make them change their minds about me? I reminded them that you always find a way to make things right. <laughs> well, historical precedent would suggest otherwise. <laughs> Speaking of which, shouldn't we be arguing about something right now? Probably. Mm. <laughs> you want to start? <laughs> <laughs>